Hello everyone. So Jamboard has come up with some new feature updates that probably we've all been waiting for. In my last Jamboard video, I showed you my hack on how to lock objects on a Jamboard. Now with Jamboard's new feature, it's even easier to lock our objects in. In this video, I'm going to show you best practices for setting up and locking your objects on your Jamboard and other tips and ideas you can use when creating your Jamboard activities. So let's begin. So Jamboard's updated feature includes the ability to insert your own background image. So I'm going to insert my image now that I want to use as my background. One thing to note about how Jamboard sets up its background image, unlike Google Slides, it does not stretch the image so that it fits in the whole background. It basically centers your image. So here I have a PDF that I converted into a JPEG and then uploaded. This is another way that you can convert now convert your PDFs into editable worksheets. What's great about using it this way is that you can now um, and highlight where necessary. Some of you who have been using Google Slides, if you notice you are not able to highlight background images as opposed to Jamboard, you're able to do that. So this is a bonus. So here I can highlight words. And with highlighting, I actually prefer to use the brush tool to highlight and then the pen tool to underline or the marker tool. What you'll notice about the brush tool is that it highlights pretty well. If you try to use the highlighting tool, you'll see that it covers most of your text so that you're unable to read it. Uh, so if you want to stick to highlighting, you might want to use yellow. That's the best color. Um, otherwise, if you want to use other colors, I recommend you just use the brush tool. And then you can pre-fill your text boxes so that students can type it, uh, type into them, or you can just teach the students how to insert text boxes. It's just pretty simple. Text box, and then now they can type in the space that they need. So since the inserting background feature of Jamboard centers all your image. It's best to set your, create your background on the actual canvas and then insert it back into the background. So here I have a two page PDF that I converted into a JPEG. So what I want to do is I'm going to set up my canvas so that I can make this into the background because I want my students to annotate them. In this case, it's not necessary, but usually what I like to do, so especially if it's an object I need to stretch away off the canvas, I like to use the magnifier, the zoom, and just zoom it to 25%. Then I'm able to see more of the board, and if, I, if part of my image is off the canvas, or like my edges are off the canvas, it's still easy for me to move it around and maneuver. But in this case, I don't really need to do that. Once I have it set to what I like, what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the three dots up top, and I'm going to click Save Frame as Image. Then you can see that it's at the bottom of my screen here. So then I can go to set the background, click set background, click on the image, and I can actually just drag that file back if I delete the original or a clear frame. Here is my background. Okay, if I wanted to change the color of my text, just go up here and change my color. If I want to change my size, I can stretch it on the corners or just go up to caption and change my size. Other ideas you can use. Here I have 
my algebra tiles and I have uploaded my uh, algebra tile images onto the Jamboard. This is by clicking on this icon here, the add image icon, and uploading it to my Jamboard. You can also create your objects by clicking on the shapes and creating your objects from there. These are my pre-made objects that I made in Google Slides. So I want my students to be able to use these algebra tiles. So what I'm going to do is I, I can quickly make duplicates of these tiles. So before you would have to click duplicate multiple times to create these draggable objects. Now you can easily use the shortcut options to create these and I can quickly create these objects so um, would be cutting down my work time I can pile them together or just lay them apart up to you and then I can do the same for my other objects command D and now I have a bunch of tiles that I can drag on. So another thing you can do is you can now uh, shorthand copy and paste objects from one frame to another. So here I have my preset frame and I can actually now control C and control V from my previous frame to my current frame. And if I want to duplicate my frame, I can click on the pane on top in the drop down, and I can go to the three dots on top and click duplicate. Then I can duplicate as many frames as I like. Another fun idea you can use is to create coloring pages for your students. Here I have a coloring sheet that I took a screenshot of that I got from the Color It by Numbers website. So now if you have younger students, you can have them color in this image as part of their activity. So you can create a color key to help students uh, follow along or they can make their own key. In this case, I prefer to use the highlighting tool versus the brush to have to use as a, a coloring tool uh, because the brush, if you can see, it's kind of light as opposed to the highlighter. It colors a little bit better. And those are some ideas for setting your background, locking your images, and some extra tips to help you create your Jamboard. That's it. Thank you for watching.